Well, let's speak now live to Alvaro de Soto, former United Nations envoy to the Middle East. Alvaro de Soto, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, you were, of course, for some time the highest ranking UN official in Israel. And I saw your end of mission report. It was a pretty devastating account of failed diplomacy. What do you make of the current situation in Gaza? Well, first of all, what is shocking is the enormous amount of damage that is being done and uh, also the, the harm to c the civilians. Uh, as I understand it, there are over 60 civilian casualties and close to 400 uh, casualties uh, overall, which means a rather high percentage. Uh, and uh, the uh, precision targeting that we hear uh, about, it doesn't seem to be terribly accurate. That's on the one hand. On the other, it seems to me that uh, we are living through a very familiar pattern which is not going to lead to the desired uh, result and that uh, perhaps uh, a step sh back should be taken in order to think somewhat more strategically. Uh, uh, Hamas is uh, n not going to be uh, broken, certainly not by a, a pure uh, uh, air uh, assault and uh, even a ground assault which would uh, produce, of course, many casualties on both sides, is not likely to produce it either. There is no military solution to this conflict. You have to have an inclusive negotiation. And I think that at least one of the reasons why uh, Hamas uh, uh, continues to fire uh, rockets at uh, uh, Israel uh, uh, is uh, precisely to signal that uh, they, too, should be uh, dealt with as part of the search for any solution, and that's not being done. Okay. That was the uh, error committed by the international community starting in 2005. Mr. De Soto, Israel says, of course, that it wants to change the facts on the ground, to stop militants firing rockets into Israel, and, if possible, isolate Hamas from the bulk of Palestinian opinion in the hope that it can sit down eventually with moderate Palestinians. If you don't think any of that is achievable by these tactics, what alternatives do you suggest? Well, the alternative is to allow the Palestinians to reunify and to define what paradigm it is that they want to seek. There was such an effort made uh, starting in early 2007 by, with uh, Saudi auspices, and that was a very promising moment because it was uh, Fatah and Hamas, the main political forces amongst the Palestinians, who together were trying to uh, jointly govern, and that would have created a situation where you had uh, the PLO leading the political negotiations with the Israelis, whilst uh, the uh, government, a joint uh, national unity government, could have actually matched uh, uh, the uh, uh, progress of the negotiations with measures on the ground. But you needed to have, uh, you need to have a horizon. You need the Palestinians uh, it, to recover faith that a Palestinian state is actually achievable. For, forgive me for interrupting. Uh, we're slightly limited for time. Do forgive me for interrupting. If possible, briefly, if you can, given the facts now, though, the situation now, what do you think is the best thing to be done? Well, they, they should uh, cease fire. Obviously, both sides should cease fire. That's going to be very, very difficult uh, in the dynamic uh, of the moment. I mean, there is uh, uh, genuine ire on both sides, and I can understand the ire on both both sides. The sooner that uh, talks can begin, uh, uh, but of an inclusive nature that bring together the Palestinians rather than negotiating as if one portion of the Palestinian people didn't exist, namely the, the people who supported Hamas in legitimate elections, the sooner it will be possible to actually get something serious. Uh, because uh, on the current uh, uh, on the current uh, path where you negotiate only with uh, the Palestinians that uh, that you like and the Palestinians that uh, uh, mark uh, the X's on the uh, appropriate uh, uh, boxes, you're, you're just not going to get anywhere. Alvaro de Soto, thank you very much indeed.